Since this is our first use of an online reading in the course, I wanted to take a minute to walk you through it to make sure you weren't confused about what I was asking you to read. So when you click on the link to a brief and true report, it's going to take you to a PDF document from the Digital Commons, which is an amazing intellectual uh, resource. Anyway, this is a really nice version of a 1588 text that I think is really the first great American studies text by an English colonist. Uh, the, in many ways, you could argue this is the founding of the tradition that, that we're rewriting and reimagining today. Anyway, when you open up the document, this is the first page, and it identifies the text and the editor. And, and what I'd like you to do is scroll down and very carefully read the introduction to Thomas Harriet and the text that the editor has provided. It's only two pages, and it's awesome. Better than any lecture I could provide you. So please read the couple of paragraphs really carefully before you go on into the text. At that point, after that point, I'd like you to just browse through the text. Some of the visuals are really interesting. They've included some of the original images and actual uh, pictures of the print, which you'll notice is an older, tougher to read uh, style from the late 16th century, which is when Harriet was writing. And I just want you to kind of scroll through those pages and check them out, explore as you want to. And then you'll find that the, the um, uh, brief report turns into a long list of the commodities that Harriet sees available to the English by colonizing what will later become the United States, the eastern seaboard of North America. And he literally spends about 30 pages going through the amazing range of commodities that he imagines being able to sell. They quickly realize they're not going to hit it rich on gold, although there are references to valuable minerals. But really what's being walked through here are the kind of things that Harriet finds in abundance in uh, America, in the New World, as the English understood it, that were becoming much harder to find in the overcrowded uh, cities and countryside of England, which is a relatively small country with an exploding population. So I just want you to kind of flip through these pages and check out some of the different items that he mentions and some of the different uh, commodities he sees. This is going to be especially important when we discuss ideas of nature as transcendent versus nature as a commodity. And I think you'll see strands of both in Harriet with a dominance of nature as a commodity because he's trying to sell the colonial investor and uh, the colonial adventure to investors and possible colonizers back in England. Anyway, the part we really want to look at begins on page 34 of the nature and manners of the people. And that's where he really starts talking about the Native Americans he encounters and their culture and his observations of that culture. And that conversation pretty much goes from then, page 34, all the way to the end of the text, which I believe is on page 48. And this is the part I'd like you to print out, carefully underline, looking for passages that you think are interesting or about the various tensions that we've discussed so far or the three new ones that I mentioned at the end of my introduction to the reading. I hope you enjoy this text but brace yourself for a challenging read. As the semester goes on the language becomes more familiar and the readings become more recognizable but these early texts give us a really strong foundation for what we want to do later and many of you will find you want to use quotes from this text in your first paper and you'll certainly see quotes from this text in our quizzes. See you in Blackboard!